seeing where this goes. Alright, we are live. So, hello guys, welcome back to the ENSL Natural Selection 2 Better Cup final match between Arkir and Naxal. Right now, the scores are tied up 1 to 1. We're playing on NS2 Vale with the starting hive cargo for aliens. And with me in the channel is Ryan yet again. Hello, Ryan, and thank you for being here. Oh, thanks for having me, Blind. I could have you every day, man. It's <laughs> <laughs> a bit off, man. <laughs> Okay, so we have two guys in topo, just capping the nodes, and lots of marines on the west side. They will have easy play capping. All the aliens are gathering up in East Junction, but look at that, what do we have in Pipeline? Yeah, we have a very, very quick hive drop with two gorges on it. It's going to go up very quick with those, uh, both those gorges healing it. And also it's going to get lots of defense. You see already one of them dropping hydras. Both of them are dropping hydras. So they are really serious about this hive. They really want to have leap to kind of deal with those... Um, Marines, as we all know, Akia are one of the top notch Marines. They have godlike aim, and you need every upgrade you can get against those. Interestingly, the aliens have three gorges? No, only two gorges. Uh, there's a little pressure coming into cargo, though. These uh, aliens really need to get those Marines down and not let them in there. And looks like they will. They've got two skulks here, and it looks like Fana's going to go down. But oh! Yeah, there we go. Red Dragon can take them out. I believe Red Dragon's the newest team member for Nexel, recently added in the past few days. Yeah, he. I remember him playing without attack yet, so I think it was a fresh recruit, you're right. And look at that, face tech research first for Marine, surprise, surprise. Yeah, I'm betting they're wanting to lock down Subsector and at least get some presence on there. That'll allow them to hit Cargo Hive with ease. Right now, I think every match I watched on NS2 Vale competitive, I think most of the teams went for face tech first. You don't see it on every map, um, especially Summit and the others. There are some different strategies involved, but right now, I think everyone feels comfortable about having a nice fast face gate near double or a second hive, or to put up some pressure since they just noticed or have noticed that pipeline is dropped, but it's way too late, it's already up and active. Of course, going for the second hive is going to slow down the aliens on getting their upgrades. For example, we do not, do not see them have celerity yet, and uh, the leap just started. So it's sort of a trade-off. They're only sitting on one RT right now because they just haven't been able to afford another res tower. Exactly, and there's also a big risk in doing that. I noticed Akir doing lots of um, early RT pressure early on, and if they manage to take down one or two res nodes, you might easily get res capped in the game and just insta-lose. Insta the aliens are doing pretty good work on uh, working on RTs. They have one down, and then if you look at Overlook, it's only at 8%, uh, so I imagine that one will go down fairly quickly. Although but the Marines are looking, it looks like they're locking down double rather than uh, subsector. We see a phase gate and double and one RT already at. And also phase gate in the neck coming up, so they want to put up some pressure in pipeline, keep the position there in double and in pipe, so the aliens will hopefully be busy defending the whole time while they have the six rest nodes. lots of pressure coming in in the neck and I think the power is not active no it's not the face gate is not active I think they might have forgot it or nice I job. think the same just got in there just in time to stop them from getting the power up it's gonna be a huge loss for these Marines it's uh, a bunch of resources wasted that's right and also lost the momentum there to push at least they got recycle on the face gate they are in pretty good position though they have five RTs up at the moment they're ones uh, being attacked right now but uh, with double lockdown, we're gonna have pretty good resource for this game. And there's a big group of Skulks here leaping in, and they see lots of pressure on cargo with shotguns in the field. But nice job by Nexel, taking all of them out. I have to admit, I'm really surprised about Nexel, how many Marines they're able to kill. Just looking at the, at the kill and death scores, it's pretty surprising for Akira not having like twice the amount of kills. You have to keep in mind this is a North American server, and uh, Archaea, of course, is a European team with the exception of Ryan. Oh yeah, that's true. They can give the boost here, and we have some pressure on double. Remember, there's no no mine packs on those gates, so it's a lot of easier to grind one of those face gates.
Also nice job by the aliens taking down all the all the rest nodes on the west side. Look at that. Sub is down, Overlook is down, West Skylights is dying right at the moment to Sidia. And yeah, the Marines have a hard time defending the nodes. They can cannot even put up the pressure. They get repelled by Nexel all over, and I'm really amazed it's gonna be a really close game. And again, we, we talked about this earlier, but Nexel is a little bit behind on their upgrades because they did go for that second hive early. They did get leap before they usually would, but they do not have any uh, upgrades like Celerity or Adrenaline or anything like that at the time. Although yeah. the shift just completed, so I imagine we'll see those soon. Yeah, that's true. They will probably drop a, a spur as soon as they can and upgrade Celerity, I think. And while they're doing that, they keep just two rest nodes. Um, they're not trying, they're not even trying to cap C12 because they know there are always Marines uh, around there and they will have a hard time defending. They'd rather stay on two rest nodes, easier to defend, and put up more pressure on the Marine nodes. There's also nice drifter placements all around, but um, I have to say I would prefer the faster upgrade and then the drifters maybe. But look at that, we have some nice pressure on cargo. Three Marines with shotguns. Uh, cargo has its uh, ups and downs, but uh, where the Marines are right now is not a good location for them. There's lots of cover for Skulks to approach them. Uh, I would have liked to see those Marines push in further down below the hive and use the openness to their advantage. That is true. So the aliens had a nice timing. If they would have waited until the aliens Marines are in the back open foot here in cargo, that's much harder to take them out. But look at that, we have a face gate in subsector now. So they're going for um, two position lockdown or defend three face gates in total to hold. It's much more difficult against high life forms, but with skulks they can pull it off. Yeah, they have a really high res flow, and if you look at the res count right now, it's a very, very high. They're at 50 resources. I, I bet they're saving up for something. Uh, we do see an arms lab just being dropped, so a lot of the resources will go into that to research some upgrades like weapons and armor. And there, speaking of the devil, there's armor one started. Exactly. I missed the mine packs around the face gate. Subsector has no mine pack. But double has. And look at that, they lost already six rest nodes in seven minute mark, and Red Dragon, Red Dragon is chewing more and more of them. Overlook is going down right at the moment, and I think that was the main reason for them um, putting the face skins up so they can have those rest nodes easier to defend. But they're still having some troubles there. Nexel's doing a great job on these RTs, they're continuing to put the pressure on, but they're attacking both Overlook and Western Skylights and switching back and forth on which one they're attacking. It's making it very hard for these Marines to put a stop to this uh, harassment. That's true, and we have Celerity up up and running uh, now. Five, five scopes from Western Skylights. Let's oh, see if they rush the base. There, so yeah. The there will. If you have five scouts there, you might as well just go there. They should pull out now. And they do it without losing any, uh, they did lose one skull. Yeah, and it blew off a lot of mines, and that's where the, all the mine packs went. I was wondering on the face gates, I'm expecting more mines, but they put them all down in base. I think they're expecting lots more base rushes by Nexel, just experiencing from the matches yesterday. Wow, Bush is doing a great job in that toggle. He doesn't get the RT down, but it was down to 1%. He was using it as cover against those two Marines trying to work on it. And it looks like Akir stabilized themselves. They're holding the resonance now. They're two solid six resonance, defending them. Um, it's not like, oh no, five, as I speak. But they'll finally be able to get some more pressure up, um, while aliens do have three RTs up. So look at that in cargo, yeah, the marines are exactly going in the back spot there with the open space, but one marine is too slow, Seiko, he is still not with his buddy in the back, so both marines are separated. And they do get both of those marines down. I want to point out another downside to this quick hive strategy is just the team, or the personal res of each alien uh, player. None of them are above 40 resources right now, so it's going to be a little bit before they can afford individual fade eggs. Although at this point, the commander could drop two fade eggs. He has enough resources to, and not really much to spend it on. And we do see Blink Sarge to there, anticipating getting fades up soon. Oh, yes. He might just as well drop fade eggs. They don't even need to wait for the personal rest. The most crucial thing for fades you need is, of course, two hives and some rest. You can afford it. And we lost a, a rest node in C12. We got two marines there, Trefnix and Skurgang, putting up some pressure pipeline. They might as well just go for the node and pipeline and try to snipe that too. 
That looks like they're gonna do exactly that. Squeegan's taking down that one Hydra that was defending that RT. Oh, and I don't agree what what uh, Trefnix is doing. He's just running in the midst of all those Hydras and dying there, trying to snipe yeah, the don't gorge. Know quite what his goal was there. I think he might have wanted to try to go for the gorge, but well, you can always jump in the hive when there's no commander to save your gorge. It's like a nice feature there, save the chair. But yeah, I think it was a mistake by Trefnix, splitting up and walking in there. So the oh, we see jetpack started already. That's a fairly early jetpack for the uh, these recent games. Oh yeah, but we still have weapon two on the way, armor one finished, and oh look at that sub. All the skulks working on the power node, and it's really really low. And that's Ooh, a downside. That. And it is down. They will take down. Oh, and this is a nice time. If they can take down the sub sector command chair, they all need to group up and go there now before they can rebuild the power node. And what they're doing, we got B-Link coming up from Overlook. We need more Skulks, where are the Skulks? We got two X, I think, Fade X maybe. Oh, nice job by Link. Just going in exactly when they're trying to weld the power node. Now he's just delaying the Marine, hoping for some uh, reinforcements from his team, although more Marine reinforcements are coming in, so it's going to be very hard. Yeah. They need to take down Fana now before the reinforcements comes in. Oh, nice job, look at that by Fana. He is too confident by that. They don't He's ever... doing a great job of pulling off that node when he needs to and uh, helping out. And exactly. that helped get all those alien lifeforms out of there. Yeah, so aliens uh, lost their chance there. Uh, yeah, it was really The stage hard. is set for fades. Uh, we see Adrenaline and Regen are both up, as well as Blink. So now it's just a matter of time before we get our first uh, fade, on the field, fade on the field. We do see that the players are sitting about 42, 43 resources, so they only have six or seven more personal res to go before they get it. And meanwhile, Blink is in an egg. Yes, he is fade. I believe uh, the commander bought him a fade egg, so we do have one fade on the field. Oh, and double face gets really low. The nano shield just saved that face gate, because now there's a fade. Marine coming in. That is Fana, yeah, he has that welder from earlier, so he's gonna be able to weld that right back up. And there we got some fades um, action. They are on top of feeling. He will just go straight for the base of Marine Star, but there's two Marines, or three even, just waiting for him. Plus some mines. And there we got jetpacks now in the field. Under attack. Oh look at that, they even research grenade launchers. They really went on. This looks like a push coming in for cargo and with GLs it's a lot easier to stay in the back and just put the grenades in the hive. Use that uh, instead of... Well just do a jetpack rush. You can do both. When, yeah, when you have jetpacks it's really easy to stay alive in cargo. There's lots of little places for you to land and recharge your jetpack that take the aliens time to get up to. Um, cargo's a really favorable room for jetpackers. That is true, they don't even need the gel there. I don't see any hydras in cargo. I just see the hydras all around, around pipeline. So if they want to push pipeline, the gels could help a lot, but on cargo, you you can do an easy jetpack rush with LMGs even, then beacon them out. We see Blink is continuing to pressure the main base. And Trefnix is trying to hold it, and he's one more hit before he dies, but oh, oh my god! That's not good for the alien team. We do see a, another fade popping up. Versal, I think the commander bought him a fade egg as well. Well, this uh, Blink is, is very close to being able to buy his own fade egg, so it's not a huge loss for him. Uh, he'll be able to go right back fade in here in about 30 seconds. That is true, but they are still not on this rest situation where they can drop fade eggs left and right. They're only at three rest nodes. I mean, three is fine. They have all upgrades they need at this moment. Um, but still, if they lose more and more fades over, Marine will just outtech them. As you can see, they're just keeping the upgrades going. We will have weapon 3 and armor 3 pretty much soon up. Well, look at that. We got 10 RTs lost for Marines, and still they were able to get so many upgrades out of that. It's a really nice recapping constantly all over the game. I think what Nexel needs to do here is they need to, to get some fades, a little bit more teamwork with the fades. I see fades in every place just attacking alone. 
So um, that that's a moment like you had the same momentum in NS with jetpacks out. The only chance to really do damage is go as a pack. And I think in NS2 it's even much more easier since there is no motion tracking um, upgrade where you can see like on a wall hack where the aliens are moving for everyone or in the minimap. It makes the, the, the pack movements much more better for aliens. Yeah, I agree. It seems the aliens are sort of all over the map, sort of putting pressure in both subsector, the base, and a few RTs. They need to sort of focus up, work as a team, and figure out exactly what they want to do to try to win this game. Looks like they're doing it now. We got three fates grouping up, and they will go for subsector. Look at that. They're all grouping up. They're even taking a gorge with them. This is a serious push for subsector by Nexel, and here we go. Marines, there's. Command station taking damage. Marines are, looks like they're going to rush both uh, hives at once. Yeah, because they notice they cannot face back in time, it doesn't matter, so they just can um, just put up pressure themselves, it doesn't matter. Zico and Ryan are taking out every single one of the alien upgrades, all three upgrades are gone. Oh my god, yeah. Hunter is now alone and subject to using his bio bomb to try to get this command chair down. He's going to be relatively safe because there is no phase gate, although here comes Fana to try to stop him, the command chair does go down there. So we will have no more jetpacks at this moment, since the second CC got destroyed in subsector. Every jetpack which dies will be not replaceable. Oh, look at that, a hive is dropped in subsector to block that uh, command chair. So the Marines are not going to be able to drop a command chair until they work on getting that hive down. Oh, I'm not 100% sure if I agree with that. They needed the rest to get the upgrades back, I think. But also, this, uh, the idea is nice. They, they, they know if they get more jetpacks, that's the way they will lose. Against Arkear, you absolutely don't want to face Arkear's jetpack shotguns with weapon 3, armor yeah. 3. I would agree with you there. I think they should have gone for the uh, upgrades. Those fades are going to be cut in effectiveness without regen or adrenaline. And uh, they, they could have just kept a uh, life form presence in that room to prevent the rebuilding of the command chair. Now this hive's going to go down for a little gain from it. Yeah, that was my first thought process there. Yeah. So it was a little bit too cocky here, but. um. Too risky move to block this position, but with four marines, they should go for a base counter rush right now before there's a phase gate up. But it might be too late. But hang on, we got Shaker in the second fate now on base. They're not going for the ops. The ops is already down. Scram does jump out. I don't know what he's gonna do against three fades though. Oh my god, this could actually work. Nope, they got him before the uh, command chair closed up, so it does not kill any of the fades. If the commander is in the chair while it closes, it will kill life forms. But if they kill him before it closes, uh, they stay alive. That was a close defense by Marines here. The phase gate was still active, so the commander sacrificing himself to buy time was the best thing. And the, the mistake here by aliens was to all go for them. They should have had everyone kill the phase gate fast and just one um, care, care about the commander logging out. I want to point out they're really feeling the effects of not having region right now. Those uh, fades aren't able to blink out and heal up. Shaker goes down uh, just because he went in with half health. But hold the thought, at the same time while they put up pressure in base, they, they forced all the marines to come back and Subsector is still not down. It's actually grown in, in one second here. We got Adrian back up now for the fades. So maybe the enemy team did a great thing there by not taking out the phase gate. What they did is they pulled all the marines back to the marine base and uh, were able to basically lock down subsector for the uh, time being. Oh my god, this is such a beautiful team play. Where both teams, I'm, I'm, I'm in love with this game right now. This is wow, such back and forth. Oh, this looks. This completely turned around. At this moment before they attacked up, I thought uh, Nexel surely lost this match, but with three hives up, the only problem for them is they don't have the rest currently to get all the upgrades, so the fates and life forms are all weaker. And this gives um, the marines the opportunity to just go in sub and take this hive down. You can see though they do have a third RT up and they just dropped a fourth. So they are going to get the rest flow going now. They've been on two or one this whole game, so... Unless the I marines are taking it up. down. I think maybe Nexel should have uh, stick to the same strategy again, going for a counter rush. But there goes the hive. Too late for any of those. Uh, I want to point out the we, they do have adrenaline back up, and I see a shell drop, so it'll be very quickly uh, for region to get back up. 
So we will have region, but we still have five active resonance, four marines, and they resecured subsector. So once the CC is up, they can all buy a jetpack. Everyone except Fana has the rest for that. I do want to remind everyone this is the final, so it's a best of five. The teams are currently one and one, so one of the teams is gonna have to win twice today to take home this cup. Exactly. So we'll see at least another game for sure. No matter what team wins. Oh, and look at that. Two. Aliens are not giving up Subsector. No, they're going to be able to clear that out again. I don't think we'll see a Hive drop in there again for the time being. Oh god, I've got a lot of artifacts on this map here on my screen. <laughs> it's really hard to see something with that. Yeah, this map has a few issues with artifacts. I'm not quite sure what it is. Uh. I'm pretty sure they will fix it soon. Yeah, it's a, it's a known issue uh, that they're working on. Again, this game is still in a beta. Oh, we lost the fate, I think. Red Dragon, wasn't he a fate? I'm not sure. But oh, you see the command chair going up, though. They are going to be able to buy jetpacks again now. Exactly, right this moment. They are able to. What they need now is that face gate, and they can all face back and get a jetpack. And from there, they can go back up with the pressure. And another reminder, the two games that were played yesterday were on a European server, and so it was 1-1 after playing those two games on the European server, and now we're going to play two games on the American server. This is the first one of those two. Woo! That fade almost died. Yeah, these fades are being a little risky. Uh, it's hard to be a fade, a solo fade, on these competitive games, because if you run into one or two Marines, they're going to land numerous shots on you instantly, pretty much. Especially without carol pace upgrade. Well, the region helps you in being a ninja fade because you will heal up the, the health really, really fast. You don't need to go back for Hive 2 healing. That gives you more time to be more active, but, well, on the other hand, you die faster. In a serious engagement. Zico trying to take down Emergency now, so that is the alien's third RT. So if he can cut that down, he cuts the res flow by a third. It looks like he will get it down. God. This, this place looks like a million spikes. <laughs> uh, guys, if you see all this uh, graphical errors on the spectator view, don't worry. This is just for this map. Uh, known bug. It will be fixed. So we are back to 5 Resonance for Marines and right now with fully upgrades. Jetpacks, Weapon 3, Armor 3. Um, it's up to Nexel again to, to do some pretty much damage. Look at that, Seiko seeking some upgrade chambers in pipeline. And going for the node instead. Yeah, the aliens have relocated those upgrade chambers to cargo hold. Command put it behind a few boxes. Uh, hopefully, it'll stay well safer there. Or we also Is have he... a gorge in Subsector trying to buy bomb some mines. Yeah, but those grenades took him down real quick. It only takes one or two mines to get a good hit on him to uh, take away most of his health. Um, we got a little base rush coming in with two skulks, but um, oh, the marines just phased out. So if they go straight for the face gate, they should go for the face gate, in my opinion. Oh no, wait, the beaconing. I'd like to see Red Dragon stay on that observatory. I think they might have had a chance of getting it down before the beacon went through. I Although it would have been close with that uh, mana shield. Uh, I'm not. I'm not sure. I'm, I'm not sure. I don't think so. The other problem is forcing the beacon is good. It was the best they could do with the commander reacting really fast. Um, Maybe, but well, I expected the marine facing in from the face gate to just shoot those two skulls. Anyways, that's why I would have usually went for the face gate just in this little moment, just with two. There was two marines just facing out, so they're close to face gate. Obviously, can't face back instantly. Cargo, meanwhile, is down to 50% health, and there's a jetpacker still in there. They, he's almost dead, but there, there he goes. He finally does die. The hive goes down to 40%. We see another quick rush in here. Uh, they could get that hive down. Although the subsector phase gate is down to 14% health. Yeah, we see a lot of nano shields on the gate to keep it alive, and all the fades are coming in now, so subsector is safe for the moment. They're already insta welding that. They're getting a second phase gate up in there. They, they want to make sure they hold that room. I think it's going to be very hard for the same team to uh, take these rings out without a gorge in there. That is true. Oh, look at that. See, they're taking down Fana. Oh my god. Skulk against Fana jetpack. How often do you see that? <laughs> Remember, it's really, really hard to take down good jetpackers. 
because they can dodge you. Here comes a big push on subsector. We have two, three fades and a skulk in there. They're gonna get this active phase gate down. It's at 30% dropping. Oh yeah, we got the whole, almost the whole alien team around there. So it is down. They will go for their CC really fast. They want to prevent any more jetpacks being dropped because they know how dangerous those jetpacks are, especially on a cargo push like. As we has have two marines there, they're going in. They might be able to kill it even if they keep going. Just Trefnix is going in. The other marine is pulling back. I think they want to try to work on some of these spades, maybe. Uh, looks see, there's a little bit. Yeah. Sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> oh no, it's fine. Uh, the hive is down to seventy percent, and Trefnix is leaving. Now we got another marine jetpack taken out in Overlook. Just found a lap, and you just got and just only LMG, and it's not enough against the fade. And the hive is dropped again in subsector. I would have liked to see those Marines pull back and recuperate or regroup because they knew they weren't going to get jetpacks anymore. So to save the ones they have would have been smart. Oh my god, aliens really managed to get this hive back. This is out of control. This game is going back and forth ser seriously for 25 minutes now. But Marines are pushing again. I think they're strong enough to take down this hive. What I really wanted to see is again a nice counter base rush. They could have done it. They could have pulled it out right now, but. They keep sticking to defending now. We see Hunter as a gorge is moving up through uh, system waypointing. Don't know quite where he's going yet, but... Oh yeah, I see. I'm not sure either what he's doing. Oh, he's going... No, wait, he's just running in circles. <laughs> we got a big push in the overlook, though. Phase gate is down to 36%. They can get that down. They basically cut a lot of the Marines map control. That that phase gate is what's allowing them to put pressure on subsector. Oh, that was nice. By Hunter and Shaker, that's what they did. They went for the double phase gate. By taking that out, they forced all the Marines to come back to defend it. And they're actually taking down the phase gate. So if they manage to get a whole alien team there and take them down before the phase gate is back up. And they cut the phase gate in Overlook as well, so that's some map control gone. Uh, the Marines really need to get that phase gate back up and double if they want to hold that room. Wow. And here comes Versal. He's going to put some pressure on the Marine base. Nope, he's going to go for West Skylight's RT. Oh, maybe they should have rather get the Skulk there. I think we have City or Skulk, so... Because the Skulk bites, note, bites nodes faster, res nodes or extractors, than Fate. And Fates are much more needed right now in the combat. So there's still no face gate in double. Ah, Shaker but we'll goes down in double. Ah, I just thought, yeah, that was really bad. But I think at this moment they have, they might have some fade axe already ready. Kicks crime. I think he he um, disconnected. Can you kick him fast? Okay, thank you. Oh, what an unlucky timing for Marines to lose the commander right now. It would be another nice feature if you can pause the game, actually. So I hope you will rejoin really fast because this game is still not decided. Both of the teams can win and there we see Hunter, another fate dying and we're still alone against so many shotguns. Oh my god, a second fate dying in double. Oh, what a big blunder. But on the same hand, we have a base rush and there's no face skin double. If they can... There's no ops either. There's no ops in base and no face can double. They cannot face back. They have to walk the whole way back to Marine Start. Oh my god, they can end escape right now. We have Scrime back in the team, but he's not in the chair. He's just looking in this moment. And we have still two fates working. Oh, they're going for the arm slap, not for IPs. They're going straight for the arm slap because the arm slap is also a really nice idea at this point of the game. Taking down all the v weapon 3 and armor 3 upgrades makes the marines so much easier to kill for those fates. I think Ark did a great job of clearing that out. That would have been a loss for most teams. This actually right. looks like aliens are winning at this moment. They just completely turned this game around. It, it was really unfortunate that we had the commander drop. I would like to see a nice clean game. Uh, yeah. It's a little bit late to call for a restart, especially because Nexa was starting to gain momentum. Uh, so I don't think we'll see that called because these teams are, you know, fairly honest and such. Yeah, that's true. But I think they also lost uh, the ops. I'm not sure if they shoot on the ops and Scrime just disconnected before he could beacon. Um, I really cannot say that. 
It's, well, hard, it's hard to tell. On top of that, we saw the people in the double were sitting there basically without anything to do because they're waiting for that phase gate to drop. So the delay did for sure yeah. hurt the Marine team. Yeah, yeah, you're right. So um, this disconnect was really a big hurt. But we have the phase gate now back up and double. Still, the problem is we have three active hives for aliens, and they do have the rest now for additional upgrades. So we see a shade being dropped. So we'll probably have some faint death or silence upgrade um, pretty soon Command for the phase. We also got 81, no 61 rest now for um, marines. It looks like the Marines are going to go for arcs. They just got their robotics factory upgraded to a uh, arc factory. They had it even earlier. Um, I saw some max repairing stuff in base. Just well, they just upgraded it to uh, allow it to build arcs. Ah, yeah, right. Oh, look at that. We got a substick to push. Marines are really pushing here. All that. And look at it. Even using the ensign for the fates for a high attack speed. I'm not quite sure if they can know. They're pulling out. This is what I love about them. They really know exactly when it's over, and they tr even they they try to save all their guns. But wow, four fates just completely raping them. That's not a nice sort of rape. Here comes a big push on double. See these fades are working on getting these wings down. It's really helpful to get a board right now. They still bother on pile bombs. Oh, this looks really bad for Marines now. I cannot believe it. Arkir is about to lose this game. Well, you can you can point it down to the moment where Scrime um, just disconnecting. There we go. It's GG. They're calling it. Oh, I, will, I will say though that Nexo was gaining a bunch of momentum up to that point. It just happened at sort of the exact wrong time for the commander to disconnect. Exactly. Yeah. Without that, they still would have had the chance, but um, still you have to give the props to Maxwell. They fought the whole time to up to this moment at a, at a situation where I thought them clearly lost. Um, they managed to come back into this game. It looks like uh, Arcade has gone ahead and F4. They realized that losing double is sort of the end. The, the beginning of the end, we'll put it. Yeah. I'm speechless, Ryan. That we have Nexel in the lead, 2-1 against the favorites of this whole tournament. Akir being back now, and wow! I.